if you're going to do something, you better carve out your own market. Because believe you me, I've seen a lot of guys graduate from my art school who are the best cab drivers right now in Toronto. And they were a lot better than me. And probably even still to this day, if they pick up a pencil, they'd be better than me. But bottom line is that they didn't have the focus or the drive to, in a direction. Whereas I, I kind of chose this direction because A, I was comfortable with it, and B, it was an untapped market in the Toronto area. At this stage of my career, I'm picking and choosing exactly what I want to do, and it's been rewarding that way. This looks like the place. Well, this is going to be the future home of Rose Cherry, Rose Cherry's home. My name is Rob McDougall, and uh, I kind of picked the coldest day of the year to be doing this, but uh, this is going to be the warmest house on the planet from what I saw the uh, blueprints of this house that's being built. I've known Don Cherry since 1985. I've known Rose that many years, and she was a great lady, and what I plan on doing is I want to do a painting where we're going to make a limited edition print that will be sold with the proceeds going towards the Rose Cherry home. I'm going to take you through this painting from beginning to end so that you can understand and appreciate the labors that I have to go through in order to make it happen. Okay, so now we're going into my studio. This is uh, how about 10 feet by 10 feet. And as you can see, it is pretty compact. There's tons of stuff I stick to the walls. If I had a room that was 20 by 20, it'd be in a bigger mess. So if I keep it 10 by 10, it's nice and compact. This is basically my inspiration. It was titled American Gothic. We should have a Canadian Gothic. So I'm proposing that I'm going to be putting Ron McLean here and obviously Don. But in the background, I'm going to use it like a barn-shaped arena. What I try to key in on is light and shadow, making sure that um, all the details done with the pencil. And then when I go into the painting, I make it transparent so that the pencil always comes through, so that you can determine the light and shadow where the shadowed areas are. It's just a process that I've done and it's, it's I call it trial and error. I've learned techniques from people like, I'm no uh, genius, man. I've, I've basically apprenticed by just looking at what other people do. One thing about the art world, too, is that no one's original. I mean, I'd like to think I'm original, but you're not. You know, uh, I, I, I made it a policy in my life to sit, I'll always sit beside the best kid in class. My whole life. Even when I was in grade three, I always sat beside the best, best kid. They always had the best answers. So I figured I'm going to apply this to my uh, art career. So when I went to art school, I always sat beside the best artist in the class, and I used to sit and watch how they drew. That's how I developed, so I'm a cheater, big time. Now I'm doing the uh, line work on the barn. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not using any math. When I started this as a career, I retired. I, I am not, like what I've done in my retirement, I've probably made some good money, <laughs> but uh, it's not like a job. It's, what am I, okay, give me a million bucks. What do you think I'm gonna, gonna do tomorrow? I'll probably come back here and start drawing again. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, it's very rewarding to sit back and, and, and do something or fire something against the wall that you don't like, which I've done. I'm never going to get as good as I want to be, but I have to find some form of, of content along the way, you know? All right, so where do I begin? Ah, get ready. Why not? Like I said, I'll just lay this in flat. So here you go. I did all this pencil drawing and I didn't really need to, but I do it. Each year I would do a painting at the Smythe dinner 
and I would donate it and the proceeds would go towards the, the, the children. That's how basically I got into doing limited editions. And somebody exposed me to the fact that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good business to get into if, uh, if you pick the right subject matter. I mean, some of the guys that I've done in the past, uh, you know, some people would just love, love to have, like I've done Wayne Gretzky limited edition t twice now, and it was just something I did, I don't know. I was really into uh, advertising when I first got out of art school. I mean, that's my, my way of surviving was advertising. Jeez, I mean, I was doing fridges and toasters, and I did the odd female ad. You gotta make your ends meet, you know? I was told that you can't make a living in art as a child. So if you, uh, if you wanna pursue the art business, you'll live in a second story room above a sporting goods store, <laughs> which is where I am. <laughs> but am I happy? Yes. Everything's good. Life is good. This particular project goes back to my relationship with uh, Don Cherry back to 1985 when I first met him. I'd always been a, a big fan of his, you know, some people don't really care for his uh, way he does things, but back then I, I, I really believed that he was uh, the beacon for all us rednecks out there, <laughs> us rednecks who couldn't uh, get our word on television or on the radio. So uh, I approached him, I I'd understood that he was going to be doing a book and I wanted to possibly do the cover of his book because I was really into cartooning back then. And uh, so I sent him some pictures and he phoned me up out of the blue and I was so blown away that I had this guy, he's, on the, on the answering machine saying, hello Rob boy, this is Don Cherry. I really like what you're doing. I want you to come in and see me. And wow, you know, I just graduated from art school and I thought, man, this is it. I'm meeting, I'm meeting some highfalutin guy, yeehaw. <laughs> and I went and met him and uh, it's been great ever since because I think you know, we're from the same neck of the woods, you know, like the same, the same creed. My dad's uh, was a hard adder kind of guy, construction all his life, had to make ends meet, feed four kids, blah, blah, blah. And I think that, that was exactly what was happening to Don, you know. My process is my process. If I've made your nose that way, it's because I've interpreted it that way, not how you've interpreted it. I mean, there, there's a lot of artists out there that will give you exactly what you want. I mean, if you're married to an ugly, but ugly woman, which there's an artist in the past named John Singer Sargent used to take but ugly women and make them beautiful, okay? But he was getting paid handsomely for it. Well, I'm not getting paid handsomely, so if you're butt ugly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw you as I see it. If I interpret you my way, then that's the way it is. That's my interpretation. If I've made you, um, if I've offended you, I certainly didn't mean to do it. I just blame it on the hand. <laughs> You know, there's some, so many people out there that never used the talent that was given to them. They just kind of, oh, I'll do that when I retire. And some of them just never get a chance to actually finish what they've been given. So I'll never go to my grave and say I didn't give the best shot for what I'm doing. You know? And I've still got a long way to go. I've, I've got, uh, I still need to learn a lot. There's so much to learn. Now we're coming to the part which makes people think I'm nuts, but what I'm gonna do here is I've got a, a plate with three colors of oil paint. This is actual oil paint. I'm gonna paint that right on top of this, but I'm gonna do it in a wash.
The next part is uh, I use this little piece of uh, kneaded eraser and even though that this painting is still wet, the paper is still wet, I can still pull off subtle little areas like uh, obviously I just hit the forehead but I can go in there and just pull A uh, good example of trying to pull it off is I, it's a little, still a little wet around the nose here, but I'll just show you. See, see what happens? I can make this thing jump right off. If I make a mistake, I rub it back in, which I just did. When I'm with my kids, that's when I realize, you know, like this is uh, the coolest job because they, they're at home doing their homework and doing their math and I'm sitting there <laughs> drawing, drawing cartoons, and they just they can't figure it out. That how can you, how can you get away with that? And I said, well, there's a lot of history and math behind this drawing, kid. I'll tell you that right now. I had to pay my dues. From the Don Cherry Grapevine connection, I wound up working with uh, Bob McKenzie at uh, the Hockey News way back when. Same same time, I guess. And actually around that same time, I was approached by the Toronto Sun. I actually filled in for Andy Donato doing political cartoons, which I'm not a big fan of. I just don't, I just didn't feel comfortable doing um, politicians. The thing about doing sports is that in, in hockey, if you do an infraction, you get, you get two minutes or five minutes or thrown out of the game. If you're a politician and you get caught, you get elected. You know, so I just found that it was uh, not my cup of tea to do political stuff. So, and I felt comfortable with sports because I could relate to it. You know what's weird is when you when you screw up and somebody goes, "Wow, I like that part." You go, "Oh, okay." But it's funny that you can I can do a painting today and ten years from now look at it and go, "Man, that was that was really good then," or. That really sucked, but I mean, I, I found, looking back at my work like 15 years ago, some of the things that I was doing then are a lot more fresh, like uh, I find it more exciting when I look at it now going, geez, I, I should try that, and I'm thinking, well, you did. You did it 15 years ago, but I, I like to look back, yet you tend to become your worst critic as well. Okay, these are leaves that I picked up about a month or so ago, put them in a telephone book and squeeze them shut. What I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna put these on the very corners of the painting. So we got your real live Canadian maple leaf. I had a friend of mine say to me the other day that uh, what's inspiring you to do this? And for some reason he used the line well, we're not going to get out of this alive, are we? We may as well do something good. I just think this is the kind of cause that I want to be involved with. And uh, if we can make this happen and we uh, make the sales that I'm hoping, uh, it's going to make the uh, construction of the house that much sooner, I guess. I just want to contribute. I just want to be part of it.